Welcome to the Industry Boring Podcast. I'm Cullen Reichart, your host, and today we'll be covering almost anything related to cannabis. Yeah. So, um, here we go again, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome, Christy, to the... Uh, what is it? Industry Born is what we are? Yes, yeah, right. Industry Born <laughs> Podcast. Industry yeah, Born Podcast. And we have Ace Lance here. And Network. in the background is Marco kind of kicking it in the corner. Hola. Um, but Christy, welcome. Thank you. I'm honored to be here. Yeah? I, you, you live here, yeah? I mean, this is like home, right? I do. It's not per se home, like home home, but it's been home since 2008. That's pretty much home. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Where would home home be? I'm from Kansas. Oh my gosh. Oh. Yeah. Dorothy. Uh, totally. <laughs> <laughs> no but kidding. it is, you know, you're classified as a local. It takes 10 years. So you've, oh. you've met that qualification. And I'm definitely a professional local. A professional yeah. local. <laughs> oh, this is a great state because you don't have to yeah. be here very long and they give you a license. It's true. And then you can carry guns. It's cool. It's it's totally like that. It's a a very laid back. Yeah. Yeah. I like the fact that I can do U turns whenever I want to. Uh, You're one of those. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) Nothing slows you down. Oh, man. So, yeah, you've been here a minute. I mean, just to go on it right out of the gate, you reminded me because it was a bit of a blur. I was on the circuit there for a while that we were on a panel together up in Reno. It was Reno Can, wasn't it? Yes. It was a. A few yep. years ago now. I looked up everybody that was going to be on the panel with me, and I found you on LinkedIn, and I messaged you. Yes. <laughs> I <know. laughs> I was like, then I went back to LinkedIn. I'm like, okay, it all brings that's that's so, right. that's so That's so sly. I, yeah. That's just a sly move. That's great. Yeah. That's good. You got to know your panelists, right? You do. Yeah. I've only done one, and it was uh, it was one of the most difficult experiences I've ever done because it was it was supposed to be a technology panel, but the woman who was running the panel hated technology, specifically hated trimmers in the industry, <laughs> and and two of the other guests were very anti-technology because what at the time was happening was you know tech and big money and corporate was moving into the yeah. Emerald Triangle, and so it was a real battle. So I'm sitting with uh, with another tech guy. We both own machine companies, and we're sitting, getting just like the whole conversation, totally like the first half an hour is these three people talking about how horrible tech is, and I finally got a second. I said, hey, hold on, hold on. There's, there are great American companies out there who have families, and we feed them too, and we're just yeah. here to make your life better. Yeah. <laughs> you know? I was like, holy cow. And you're not some big assault. corporate company coming from the outside in. Yeah. That, that's a difference with your, and, and probably with the guy next to you, working it from the inside out versus the outside in. Well, it was, in, it was just one of those things. Like, yeah. you know, I, I don't do panels after that. <laughs> That's it. Actually, I did keynote a, or nothing. I, I did nothing. That's it. That's it. I'm like, because at least in the keynote, I could get lost and nobody knows. Yeah. Right. Yeah, On a true. panel, I'm gonna be like, oh damn. Well, a panel, it's <laughs> it's not to compare it to you know Jerry Springer, Sally, Jesse, Raphael, and I'm dating myself, but it's interesting because you have people that are almost too outspoken on panels, and others that kind of just close up, kind of clam up. They're like, oh no, nope, this is so beyond me. <laughs> well, they can, the, they can the questions and it gets, yeah. I don't know, it gets kind of awkward. It does. Get awkward. It'd be cool if, it, if you were friends or you had rapport. So I could, I could appreciate the look up to get some kind of, at least, yeah, at least yeah. some kind of report. Right. And I, I also am a huge believer in technology. I mean, it's, it's an inevitable, right? It's going it to be here. And so what we need to learn how to do is embrace it. And me owning a staffing agency, I know that half of the cultivations I work with work with trimming equipment, yeah. but it doesn't stop us from working with the people. In fact, because of the money that they're able to save, we're able to work with them more. Yeah. And I think that that's something go. that people don't understand about technology is the money that you save allows you to actually hire more people and do more things and yep. put more money back into the economy. It, it, yeah. it, and it's just what it does for the business is it increases their value point, their throughput, right? And, and increases their, um, you know, their margin. So yeah, it's nothing really wrong with it. I think the dystopian idea that machines won't do all of this stuff is exactly dystopian. I mean, some people think that's the magic point, but honestly, I'm not sitting on my ass all day, every day. It's not no, going to happen. You no. know what I mean? So people are always going to work and they're always going to get it engaged. So yeah, yeah. it's not man versus machine. I think it's, it's man over machine. Cause to your point, and I mean, you know, I know we've all seen Terminator, but reality check, you know, you need yeah. man in order to man those machines. And yeah. like we talk about it, now they're able to focus on QA and increased throughput from other forms and fashions that can't be done by automation. So it's not, yeah, it's, it's there to support, not to supersede. Do you, do you have a hot, like, I don't even understand staffing really, yeah. but I have a question. I, do, you, do you have, a, do, do you guys have like high turnover? Do you pull a lot of people through or people come in and like, yeah, I, I'm totally digging this whole vibe and 
I absolutely love this part of the industry that I'm in and I'll let you know why. We have enormous turnover, but in a way that you wouldn't imagine. <laughs> so what I do is I bring in all these entry level people, right? That right. are making 12 to $15 an hour. We get them trained up. We get them doing all of the entry level jobs. And then they have opportunities to jump into other uh, jobs in the industry. We are a staffing agency that's completely promotes people moving up in the industry other oh, that's cool other places they charge a lot of money to do that we just want to be that stepping stone um i can't tell you i've i've already hired hundreds of people this year hundreds really? during during a pandemic yeah. and these people started off making 12 dollars an hour and if they have even decent business acumen they can go all the way. I've got people making fifty, sixty, seventy, eighty thousand wow. dollars a year after having only been working for us for a year. So great. it brings me tremendous like uh, satisfaction and happiness to be able to provide that to people. That's really cool. I mean, th I think that yeah. there's there's a real misunderstanding, um, especially uh, from the you know kind of the older school grower people you know the people who are producers especially in in, in the dark ages of, of the black market where you know um that that these machines were going to just you know technology is going to just displace and never create opportunity and and that i know for a fact that that's not true but it's really cool to hear from someone who's doing staffing to see the same kind of concept it's not what happens it creates other opportunity it's different but it's other it's just the industry is growing in leaps and bounds right and so you bring in good quality people and you move them into other positions very quickly usually within 30 to 90 days and yeah. so th this industry is one of those and look I followed technology on so many into so many different industries and I see it across the board technology really allows people that would have been doing those jobs to do higher level jobs yeah so now yeah. instead of breaking your back doing that kind of labor you're at the next level and at the end of the day that's what we want to do is evolve as humans and take the next step and take the next leap and I think that that's what technology does for us that's that's a You've mentioned that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that's, exactly that's exactly what you talk what about. Talk about because it's, it's yeah. not only that, but I think that um, it also frees the human creativity, right? So when when someone is not bound by having to provide just food or bound by just having one opportunity, like you have to do this job, right? Then they have this this other place that their minds can go and their creativity can go and their growth can go, and you kind of discover like this what people are supposed to be like which is really potent creative powerful beings right instead of just robots which yeah. is you know <laughs> which is what happens to a lot of people yeah. yeah and when you're not making when when your job um title is increased and your responsibilities are increased you're making more money and you're providing a better living for yourself and for your family and then you're able to concentrate on those things instead of just survival yeah it's it's really interesting that's one of the things i think that separates you know the the this country from a lot of countries is, you know, food is almost taken for granted, for granted, right? It's just, that's, our basic needs to survive are just not problematic, right? So we're able to be much more focused on, on uh, wants and desires as, as opposed to, uh, you know, I agree. A lot of people take those school. things for granted. I'll tell you about myself, though. I love food so much that when I have like a bite that I really like, I can't stop myself from dancing in my chair. <laughs> it's where another I'm, foodie. You'll see here. it later. I love food. Oh, <laughs> is that right? So, what, what's your favorite kind of food? Like everybody you, asks that question, well, but, but you okay. led to it. I mean, okay. What am I supposed to yeah, say? Yeah, okay. has to be a genre <laughs> okay. here. Okay, so yeah. so I like everything. I just I had. I was just um, salivating over Korean barbecue the other day, and oh, I went nice. to a place here in town called Mugao, and I just savored every single bite. But if you had to say my favorite, I'm crazy about Italian. Italian. It's also one of my favorite countries, and I've been all over the world. I love, love pasta. Yeah. Yep. Wow. So uh, I'm new ish to Vegas and I've been around and I do I do love Italian food as well I actually haven't really found that that place that's like oh, oh you God. got it it used to be it used to be um oh God, I can't remember it used to be a little hole in the wall and they moved it and they they got bigger I can't not remember. the one in Chinatown T I remember yeah, that was one of my Lotus, favorite Lotus of Siam 
right? Or well, yeah, this is Thai, but oh, it's, yeah, but, but, but Italian it's, food. The, oh. the it used to be. Um, well, that's us. Uh, yeah, there was a really good Italian food restaurant in Chinatown. And I thought it, it was, was right thing, but it's all old school, yeah. like right it, on the edge. It's right, right on a strip. Was right yeah. on a strip mall. Uh, okay, can, yeah. can yeah. I take you to yeah, your corner. next three favorite restaurants in yeah, town? Yeah, <laughs> can I? Yeah, let's do starting this. starting tonight. <laughs> in that specific. <laughs> <laughs> the next three. Starting There's a lot of yeah. good food in this With city. <laughs> I don't think people recognize. I know L.A. and San Francisco get a lot, uh, and and New York can get a lot of credit. But man, the culinary. Well, you know, you've been here since the evolution. It happened the last five or six years. It just leveled up, right? I'm from Kansas, so every... <laughs> <Everything> I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Disregard. I, I, like, I, it's all good. My, my <laughs> mind has been blown ever oh since I got here. And I, I, like, the first several years, I went to every restaurant. And then I eventually found the few that I like. I like the, the place for the atmosphere, for the food, for the owners, right? Yeah. And for the staff that's there. Those are the three things that make a place where I want to go back to. And it would be my honor to take you to my top three. Top the top three. Oh my gosh. It's a, it's a food uh, crawl, not a, it, not a pub crawl. It's not a pub I like crawl. It. Yeah. I'd probably do better actually with a food crawl. I would too. Although maybe, maybe not that Medicated much would be even better. <laughs> the pub crawl is really rough on me at this point in my life. Yeah. yeah. I know you get to a point. <laughs> it starts at the first drink. I'm like, Oh exactly. God dang it. Oh, it's going to be a long time. Listen, yeah. we're going to have drinks at all those locations. <laughs> <laughs> All of us except so for Lance. So Yes, Lance is a designated driver. <laughs> there you go. There we go. Lance, look, your purpose uh, has been, been yeah, been it's been established. Established. Yeah, yeah. exactly. So cool. what? So uh, what originally brought you? Well, out of Kansas, I, I'm sure you clicked the heels and it was all over. But you know, joke it aside, from Kansas to Vegas. I think there's a movie about that. Actually, it was Kansas <laughs> to Southern California. I oh, was. That's right. Yeah, yeah. You were in the industry. Out there. That's was, where you cut your teeth. Right? I was. Oh, I never heard that saying. I just imagined it. Oh. I found it painful. <laughs> I know. I know. It's an old yeah, school babies term. Don't enjoy it very much. No, <laughs> it's a really old school term. It's where you where you got your start. In this you know, case. It's because getting your start is generally painful. It's like it's falling yeah, down, true. smack on your face, <laughs> and then hard. someone kicking you in the back of your head. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's that. <laughs> uh, so, so, so I I went down to Southern California because I started a company. I invented a product for the beauty industry. Little superficial thing. Uh, girls with acrylic fingernails, they turn yellow in tanning beds. So I moved to Southern California. I made Miss Tipsies. Nice. Congratulations <laughs> to Miss Tipsies. And, Double and, on Tantra. <laughs> and um, within three months, I had 10 national distributors, one in the UK and one in Canada. So that was a very successful venture. Sure. Then I got into real estate, and that was even more successful. So I told my folks, hey, you know, this is when you want to give back because you're doing well. Right. I'll, I'll pay the mortgage for the vacation spots in Las Vegas. But then 2007, eight started oh, yeah. happening. Well, that, I remember that right? time. I started <laughs> losing all my money and I was too embarrassed to tell my family that I could not pay the mortgage. So I left Newport beach where I lived right on the boardwalk. Oh, oh wow. wow. Mm-hmm. That's a great town. <laughs> Ugh, I loved it. HB in Newport for the win. <laughs> the best. I was, I was on the cover of the business section of the OC Register as Entrepreneur of the Year. No Coming way. straight from Kansas. Yeah. Wow. And you beat me. Yeah, I only had go. a little blurb on a cannabis <laughs> roll in a inside. I mean, I wasn't even page six. That's a, that's you great. So are winning. And that was that for the was that for the um, Miss Tipsy Miss yeah. Tipsies. Yeah. What happened to Miss Tipsies? Did you sell? That's a long oh. story. Is and it, it sad? Mm, <laughs> it just maybe I don't, I, it'll make me start sweaty. Uh, <laughs> okay, so so what happened was just I'm going to touch on that briefly. I come from Kansas, right? And my grandparents lived on farms. My dad, yes, an entertainment industry at a nightclub when I was in high school. So it's not like I was from the farm, but I lived in Kansas. Yeah. So me moving to Orange County was like a big change for me. Um, I'm doing well. I buy my first nice car. Nobody in Kansas drives Mercedes. Okay. So then Dennis Rodman's one of my neighbors and I start hosting parties and, you know, (laughs) just things got a little out of control. Um, for my parents sake, they're like, you used to call us every day. (laughs) And then I went to every other day and then once a week and then they're like intervention. So I ended up, um, they said, look, you've either got to come back to Kansas or mom's in Florida. And I said, I'll go to Florida. So I ended up getting a penthouse at the Roni palace at 16th and Collins in Miami. 
So they thought Miami. I'm just going to throw this out here because I'm, I'm well-traveled myself. They thought that Miami, the cocaine capital for decades. It was going to be tamer. It was going to be so much more tame than, than OC. And you know it's not the OC. It's OC for those that don't know. Oh, that is a very interesting story. No wonder you didn't, didn't want to go down that rabbit hole. No, but actually... I love my parents more than anything in this world, and I never lie to them. So I went there, and even though I was there, I just enjoyed ge- being in the sun. Uh, I, I ended up starting the real estate company that did f- vastly more uh, financially than the fingernails ever could have. And then, um, and then when the, when the real estate economy started to crash, yeah. because what I had done is I started a, a new industry for uh real estate and i launched in la orange county in san diego and las vegas and i was partnered up with cb richard ellis grub and ellis and colliers international and i was just making like i said more money than i was used to so i was paying the more money than we were all used to yeah, it sounds like probably. that's great no 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 just me i was <laughs> swimming in my own little Off fish the bowl. farm <laughs> But I, but I, but I was paying for those places, and I just was too embarrassed to say, "Hey, hey guys, I can't pay this." So I, um, I moved my office into the big house, and I lived at the Panorama, and it's which is a high rise here in town. Yeah. And and eventually, I lost everything. I even sold the car that I paid cash for to pay for my employees. Oh my gosh! Oh yeah, I lost everything. Wow. It was it was crazy. But that was really that was a rough time. I think. Um, I don't know that many people that came out. Some people did, obviously, yeah. but I don't know that many people came out smelling clean on that one. No. I lost two homes in that little fiasco myself. No real estate mogul scenario, but yeah, two yeah. homes and, and uh, uh, yeah, it was rough. It was a rough time. Yeah. It really was. It really was. Yeah. I think what we learned from that, though, is that we can get through anything. You know, that and the coronavirus that we just went through and everything that happened just here in America with the riots and stuff is to stay positive. And that you can always um, return from what you think is the point of no return. Yeah, I mean, if it doesn't kill you, there's always opportunity to get back up, right? Yeah, it makes I, it stronger. Yeah. Yep. And it kind of humbles you too, I have to say, because I I completely empathize as well. Going from at that point, same thing, having a business, going from a E55 AMG to a used Jeep Cherokee, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and I was like, yeah. the car does not make the man. The car does not make the yeah, man. Right. Keep telling <laughs> My girlfriend's yourself. like, I still love you. It's not about the car. I'm like, thank God. <laughs> But you do. I mean, everyone. I think at some point or another, yeah. to your, to your, what you're saying, Colin, like it, it affected everybody on some level. You know, if you were a grown up, it, you know, I don't it's know interesting. How I mean, I think when I was but. when I was young, I had this really kind of fantastic idea of like plateaus in life. Like you yeah. reach this one, and yeah. then you go to the next one, right? I, I never really thought that there was a backside. Yeah. You know, and then that, as you get older, you know, you experience a couple of slides. And you realize that the backside is part of it. And actually, yeah. you're like, oh. It's experiential. Well, it's fucking part of the deal. Yeah. Okay. So now it doesn't matter. Right? It's, it's so much less consequential, right? Of course, I don't want to – I obviously don't like the idea of going backwards. I don't want to give up. I think we're still on the rise and working hard. But still, it's that, that concept is like, you know, I'm not nearly as concerned, you know, because yeah. I survived yeah. it a couple of times, you know, so – I mean, knocking on, okay. where's the wood? Because I'm not going down, <laughs> yeah, I'm not no going down that, that slope again. But, but also, no, it's yeah. okay to reward yourself. Yeah. You know, a lot of people don't realize, like, how both of you, all three of us being business, well, Marco even, on the table, all of us have been or are business owners at this table. But, um, you know, acknowledging your success, you know, yeah. and not feeling guilty for being like, you know what? Yeah, I deserve that car I've wanted. Yeah, I'm I deserve gonna, that I'm vacation. Do that thing. Yeah, I mean, like a lot of people, are like, oh, it's going to humble you to the point of no return. It's like, no, you come back around. Yeah, you know? I don't know. So. I mean, I like cars, so I'm not going to deny that. That's, 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 that's absolutely enjoy. what am I? Yeah, it's not a problem. <laughs> that's not, my advice. I'm never going to worry about it. Food and cars. <laughs> yeah. Food and cars. <laughs> money spent on a car is always going to be yeah. good money. Yeah. So my last three cars, when I when all this happened to me, was from Mercedes, and when I lost everything and tried to come back, they didn't give me the financing and I went to BMW, which was not my car of choice, Yeah. but they gave me the financing and the last five cars I've bought for are from BMW because I think like, thank you for being there for me when I had nothing. Brand you know what's team. funny? That. That's I, so I had this the exact same story with Chevy. I went in and I was looking at this beautiful Sierra truck. Yeah. Just, I mean, I just, God, what a stunning truck. Right. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, here's half. I have half 
of the money for this truck in my hand. Here it is. Will you, you know, will you do this? And the guy goes, eh, I really can't. I'm like, I, this is half. I have half about of the 10, money. Yeah, we're talking twenty five thousand dollars right here for you. Yeah. He's like, yeah, we just, you know, we just can't do that. And I'm like, you know, I'm going down to the Ford dealer, right? Yeah. And he goes, yeah, I, I just can't. went right down to the Ford dealer. I've been buying Fords ever since. Yeah. So I mean, you know, I mean, what a Ford do? That, well, no skin off their back, but they actually did something for a guy yeah. who didn't yeah. didn't have at the moment. And we'll never like, forget that. Nope, I still buy Fords. Yeah, and I still talk about Ford. Yeah, <laughs> I still love my Ford, and I'm gonna buy another one. I'm hey, gonna get that Bronco. I'm invested in them. <laughs> it's a good company to be invested yeah. in. <laughs> so yeah, but it's interesting. I mean, that's but so I mean, as a business owner, you, you know, I think about those little lessons, right? And I go, oh, okay, that's applicable, right? So we do the same thing. Like we always try and reach out, um, and it's it's twofold, right? It's, it's kind of that self-serving, like, you know, this is going to look good, but more than that, it's also, this is the right thing. And sometimes it hurts to do the right thing and you have to dig a little bit deeper, but we've, we've found that that's just paid in spades. You know, every time that we reach in a little bit and, and help somebody who's been, you know, decimated by fires, which is the biggest thing we, we run into in California yeah. Yeah. or, or, you know, lost businesses for other reasons, you know, if we're able to be, you know, helpful, yeah. Because those are dreams. Those are other people's lives and dreams and stuff. But I always think about that moment. Like, yeah, I'm still buying Fords because <laughs> <laughs> they financed me, you know. I was listening to an audio book last night, and this is a book that was written back in the 1950s, the Napoleon Hill. I don't know if you ever read that book. But nope. it, he was inspired by his friend Andrew Carnegie to follow the, the barons of the industry back then, and Ford was one of them. Yeah. I like going to sleep and listening to these books because it gives me wild dreams. <laughs> yeah. So I'm sitting there dreaming about Ford and, yeah. and, and, and how you're supposed to save money and all the things you're supposed to do. Yeah. And it's fascinating because you look back on his life, he was not the most brilliant person, yeah. but he surrounded himself with brilliant minds yeah. and he's created a legacy that is still alive. A dominant. Yeah. Dominant company. And, and, yeah. Then, and, then, and then look what they did for you. So yeah. kudos to Ford yeah. and, and BMW. Yeah, and BMW. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. That was my first, I, I bought my son a BMW. Loved it. Little, a little uh, three, 325, 328i. Yeah. Yeah. Great little box. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they're a great. Of, a lot of fun. Well-rounded. Well, well, yeah. Great. You know, the one I always wanted was a 2002. Oh you know the old two thousand twos. I don't know if you're. Two, oh, you know. You on. know what I'm talking about. Two thousand twos. It's up there with a uh, Datsun five ten for the win. Another one. I'll have to show you pictures. Colin. You know, I'm always doing these cars and coffees in uh, SoCal, and there was an M3 first gen. Um, what would that be? E34. Oh yeah. Oh my gosh, this guy. The original. The original BMW like that. Uh, whatever they call it, Sunrise Red. It's almost a bit yeah. just red full-on nearly 100-point vehicle. And to your point, that's just a classic. There's, a, there's classic. moments you get caught with, with guys that, that talk cars. There's these moments yeah, in automo- <laughs> on an automotive history that are just captivating these little gems that, that come down the road, and, and, uh, and you find them, and, and they captivate different people differently. Um, and Lance was just showing me a car he just picked up, which is just absolutely one of those moments in time where, oh, they dropped this car, the model died, yep. And, yep. but there's this moment, like this one little car shows up in history, and you're like, holy crap, what a fucking yeah. car. What is your yeah. favorite car? Like, if you could have any oh, classic... That just cla- came up last night. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Come on. Let's all go around the table. Well, it's, wow. it's a tough one, but, but it's a tough one because there's a couple of different kinds of, of vehicles that I, that I really, really um, I'm kind of fascinated by. I, I, I do love trucks. Um, and I, and I love sports cars, so it's, it would be, it would be tough. And there's a lot of cars I've never been exposed to, right? They just don't, I'm not, I don't have the money. I'm not going to go down. I don't fantasize about those things. I, I look at the cars I can get to, and I got to tell you the best car, the best, if I could get one car that fits the niche, it would be like a, a Porsche, uh, spider. One of the first spiders, 1960s, oh, 60s, wow. 60s, nice. 60s, yeah. Early 60s. What is it? 61, 62. Yeah. I can't Porsche remember. is beautiful. Yeah. Oh, my, it's stunning. Yeah. James Dean's car. <laughs> Give me that car. Oh not, my not the one he died God. In, that got but, wrapped around the tree. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. Rubbles. The other one, the other <laughs> the one that other didn't. One. Yeah. Yeah. Lance, Lance, what about yeah. you? That's a uh, something, something. 
That's that's again. I'm third generation automotive family, so I would geek out way too much. So the the topic came up was, oh, can you get any car? And uh, Colin's son, he was actually talking about a vehicle that I think was some for some reason the hundred thousand dollar price point came into play. Yeah. I think it's the Audi that he wanted. The R8, yeah, yeah. And yeah, I was yeah. like, well, if I had money to buy an R8, I'd buy a truck, a Corvette. <laughs> <and other things. laughs> like, I went down the list. For one single vehicle, I'm like Colin, because you get out of that dream. Where I was a kid who had Testarossas and Countach's and, and, you know, even Vectors. I got to meet the, uh, you would appreciate that. Yeah. He's a hardcore R&D and design guy. Um, but I actually met the founder of Vector, which would be another one that was on my wall. But you start thinking as you get older, you think about practicality. So that's a tough one. It's man. tough. Man. I, yes, I but I'm a genie in a bottle, and you get one car. <laughs> okay, it, it'd probably be a McLaren then. <laughs> <laughs> of course, because you, you can sell it yeah. and sorry, buy all the it, other ones. Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah, yeah. I'm that's sorry. It. That yeah. car was number one for ten years. Oh my the gosh. number one performing car in history for ten years. So you know the advantage yeah. of living amongst the pretentious because yeah. I'm I'm a NorCal guy through and through. Everyone at this company <laughs> is very much aware of that. But I do live right above Malibu and Tio, and. And I got invited to a, a ride and drive or t- test drive of McLaren's down, uh, not downtown Malibu, but like Malibu Center. And after driving that thing, I was just like, oh my gosh, like it's purpose built. Yeah. It's not, it's not, they aren't grabbing from parts bins like yeah. they do with the Audi or the Lamborghini or, you know, yeah. the high end BMWs or even Bentley. Like this is a purpose built car yeah. for fun. It's something. Yeah. That's, and they're that's selling, one of those. So. One okay. Of those, since you're achieving a bottle, rare, I'll give you the rare gems of, yeah, of vehicle yeah. history. So mine I've never driven, and I would need someone to teach me how to drive a stick shift. But I love the late 50s Corvette. Oh, wow. Love it. Yeah, 59. When I see this car, I swear to God, I, like, vision myself in it. Driving down the road, I want a silver one with red interior. That's a a rare, because traditionally it was uh, was red red and white over red. red. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, beautiful or car. Some, yeah, like a little silver bullet. Really hard. So to I'm going to tell you, <laughs> only because I have a friend that <laughs> that owns one. Um, have you ever met a celebrity that you always want? Well, yeah, you lived in Newport. You ran into, or even like Dennis Rodman. Although he's pretty humble, surprisingly. I, I actually but, used to work for Evander Holyfield when I was in college. Oh wow, he was one of the nicest. He is a super nice guy too. Incredible. A lot of boxers are that people don't know. Yeah. You know, but I was just going to say it's there are some of those older cars that like celebrities. Um, and I'm not going to name the one I met recently, but Marco will know exactly who I'm talking about, where it's just like, oh, well, I was kind of underwhelmed. <laughs> you know, it's well, because there's these cars that you have this certain perception of it. You put it up on this pedestal, and then you drive, and you're like, holy shit, the brakes suck. It's got yeah, no power, yeah, I mean, no power steering. Yeah, but well, I, I, there's the nostalgia. I need to there rent is. them. You yes. do, but if you, unfortunately, you can't rent those. Like, yeah. To rent one of those is almost like buying another new car. <laughs> let's, let's start a <laughs> rental company. So yeah. I was actually at a car show last weekend, and there was an actual legitimate um, uh, uh, Shelby Cobra. Shelby Cobra, yeah, 427, true, big boy. Yep. Yeah. Unbelievable. And it looks exactly like the replicas. Yeah. I'm like, it holy d- shit, it looks exactly yeah. like the replica. And then uh, I told them, what did I say? Exactly. I'm like... Get the replicas out of it, factory it, it, fire. It, it, I'm like, get the replica. It's it, got it, tubular it, frame. It's it, it got fuel injection. <laughs> it's got it's air, air conditioning. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it's just, but I guess it goes into perceptions. Everything, but you, know? you see it, you know, and you see it, and you go, just you just yeah. think about that moment. I don't know. But it's that moment in time. Man, that's a great tangent. Yeah. It's that moment in time, to your point. Yeah. If you don't know the history, Carol Shelby, I mean, he's kind of up there, Lee Iacocca and a few others yeah, in the yeah. industry. Carol Shelby, so he sold this concept because he was really a designer at heart. He sold the concept of the Shelby Cobra to two companies saying that the other, no, this is before, this is before internet. internet. This and, is before mo- phones. There was no, <laughs> let me phone a friend and see if you're full of shit. Yeah. Literally he went to Ford and said, I've got a company that needs an engine. Then he went to the, the, the chassis works and said, you know, I've got Ford that's, that's got an engine needs a chassis and put together that car. But it was under wow. false pretense yeah. on both sides yeah. of the provo- yeah. But he, Fake those are the chances you, you take. Yeah. yeah. He made it too. That's well. the chance that was, he takes. That was yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, you know what's funny? Is. What I always find interesting about that time frame in cars, though, is that they were driving, they were running those cars at 215, 220 miles an hour in yeah. the 1960s. Yeah. And with drum brakes. With drum brakes. And we're no still doing that today. Like, they're yeah. still not, like, even F1 is running 215 to 235. Yeah. You know, that's still 
like there's a limit. You would think like this many years later we'd sure. be doing 285. Yeah, but that's not how only on the salt. Yeah, only on the salt, salt. <laughs> and one and fucking straight out. <laughs> yeah, like that, that for sure. salt. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> oh man. Anyway, yeah, I, I think that's fun. I think that's interesting. So how? Why on earth would you go to staffing? Like mm. what? It's a hustle. Okay, so it didn't start with staffing. Oh. All right. Never so does, right? It's a little bit of a story. <laughs> <laughs> I um, I got into the industry back in 2013. And by industry, we're talking the cannabis mm-hmm. industry. Sorry. But that's okay. I figure we're all cannabis enthusiasts here. We are, here. but so, some of our audience can might be coming from somewhere else. Yeah, it could be. Yeah, they should get in. Yeah. <laughs> it's <laughs> it's never good. too late. Yeah, it's never too late. <laughs> I know it's a staffing a, agency. It's a perfect time. <laughs> it is, yeah. <laughs> So, so I got into the industry and just started like delving into everything I could. Long, long story short, um, I started off with a production lab in Southern California, Costa Mesa. Um, I named it after my two grandparents that passed away of cancer, and um, I started the CO two extraction lab. And w- the first year, we were producing award winning concentrates, and I was able to leverage the operation to get licensed here in Nevada which was exciting for me because even though my lab was in Costa Mesa, I was driving from Las Vegas every week down to Costa Mesa. By the way, I was driving 100 to 150 in my regular BMW, so I agree with you. They should go faster. (laughs) I got a letter from California that says, you might, I swear to God, this is what it said. It's not verbatim, but this is what they said. You might think you're a good driver, but you're, record shows otherwise (laughs) i just i just drove down there every single week and i calculated the time i was losing by driving the speed limit so that yeah anyways um so so i was really happy to to get (laughs) sorry i shouldn't tell that story should i that's a great story oh we tell all (laughs) kinds of stories on here (laughs) there's absolutely nothing wrong with that (laughs) okay So I was so happy to to get licensed out here because finally um, I was able to focus on building the company and working on the recipes and building the brand and then recreational passed and they were requiring a third party distributor to carry the product from um, each licensed facility. Uh, they were going to give exclusivity to alcohol distributors. So yeah. I, yeah. Yep. by the way, politics. these are Vegas politics, which are really weird in the oh, Canada space. But uh, that's that one was a whole really other show. Yeah. That's a whole other show. <laughs> oh my yeah. god! Yeah. The mob <laughs> might might not be as dominant, but the loaded handshakes and backroom meetings are. Oh man! Oh. <laughs> club, yeah, the stories I could tell you. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, right. um, so so I um, I ended up finding this little two man boutique. Uh, alcohol distributor and I used their license and I built um, I founded and was CEO of Focus Distribution and we quickly became one of the biggest distributors in the state servicing more than half the licenses and in doing that I started to find out different niches in the industry that needed to be met and one of them the biggest one was staffing so I I started the staffing company so do you do you does your staffing company then do the uh, requisite um, uh, background stuff, like like for, with the sheriff's department and stuff like that. So, that for because I know that if you're in production or your producer yep. here, you have to have all that background yep. stuff. Yeah, so. the clearance. So, do you do that? Do you carry that then, and then yep. you can bring people in? So, or? so, so, so it's a little bit different from each state. And we, I've expanded my staffing company into the newly legalized markets here in Nevada. It's very easy. It didn't used to be so, but it definitely has advanced. Um, basically what happens is anybody that work wants to work in the cannabis space, yeah. they go, they do their own background check. They do their own application to the state. And once they get their agent card, they come to me and I will place oh, okay. them yeah. now in other states. Like we, we don't have to do that here, by the way, cause we don't have cannabis in the yeah. facility. No, yeah. I mean, I, I, I brought some. Oh. Well, well I mean, you can have personal yeah. possession up to one ounce. That's totally legal. Totally fine. But generally speaking. <laughs> so funny. Sorry. All uh, good. Um, anyways. You um, might have some too. It's personal. To, personal. Yes. Yes. It's never above the legal limit. Yeah. Um, anyway, but in other states, like we just took down the first legal harvest in, in Kansas City. And really? what's unique there is you have to be, um, you have to get your agent card and background check all through the licensed facility. Wow. But you find that these 
states um several of them are very willing to work with people because they they just want to learn so i contact them i show them what i'm doing and they allow me to provide my offer of employment letter instead of from the cultivator that's great along with my contract and then we can get the people through the process but what i have learned is i make everybody pay for their own background check their own agent card and their own training because make sure they're serious you want to make sure they're serious and when i first got into business doing this years ago I'd have people never show up for the first day of work. Well, take, I'd, your, I'd, take your card and went somewhere else. I'd go out of business, <laughs> or or just they weren't they were just looky loos. They they weren't yeah. interested in the first place. So you want to make sure that the people that are going to work for you are invested, right? And then if they're invested, it's almost a sure bet. Like that's everything's going to go well. That's why we don't pay a hundred percent medical. I may say it's not, it may yeah. sound weird, but we don't do it, and I won't do it because I want to make sure you're vested. If you're interested, you want to be here, you'll pay part. Oh, for sure. You know, but I mean, there's other companies that are like, oh yeah, take everything, yeah. blah, 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 whoop to do. And I find that, I find that people, good people, generally good people, that you are trustworthy. If you give them stuff, they become untrustworthy. You have to have that. There has to be the play. There has to be this commitment from both people. Yeah, to skin in the, the game. game. Everything yeah. has to be mutual. Yeah. Like in, in in every relationship that you can think of, from friendships to business to personal. Yeah. If there, if it's not mutual, it's not going to work. It doesn't work. No. 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 I, yeah. And I and I'm I I think when I started, I I struggled a lot with with. Um, with that, I find people that be like, "Oh, wow, this person! I see the potential. I see the, you know, I see this, I see that. I'd invest and, you know, overinvest, you know, and and commit to helping somebody, you know, kind of reach what I thought that their potential would be." And um, it always came back to bite me, um, with very one exception, one exception. <laughs> but for the most part, most people are just Is Lance really the exception? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, Lance and I had a really interesting, yeah. interesting conversation, actually. I, I yeah. thought it, Lance was going to be here for a different reason altogether. Yeah. And, uh, it's. I have to tell said, you. He said, uh, no, that's not really what I do. And I was like, oh, fuck. And, oh. and, and, and he's like, well, wait, I don't know if that's really what I need. <laughs> yeah. let, 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 me, let me talk about what I need. <laughs> yeah, let me just tell you what I need. And yeah. Then maybe you could tell me what it is you could do for me. And he's like, I'm like, oh. Fuck, I need this guy. Oh. Like, this guy's got to be a part yeah, of the deal. Cool. I have to tell you something. I, I have a professional crush on Lance. <laughs> I think that, like, I, I'm a business person. Yeah. I love business. I love talking business. I love having ideas and making them come to life. Yeah. And I love talking to people that can get into that. And yeah. he is that person. Yeah. So it's like... Uh-huh. Yeah, he's, he, he's awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Got him pink over here. I know. <laughs> Doesn't take much. <laughs> English well, it's descent. Interesting. <laughs> Listen, I mean, I know a lot of people, and I know a lot of people that have ideas, and I've known, I don't know how many, hundreds of people who have had great ideas and just can't kind of follow through and do the execution. You're obviously successful in multiple different arenas. And in that moment, like there's this moment, I know my moment, right? But there's this moment when you finally figure it out. And, and, and you know, do you, can you define that place where you're just like, hey, fuck it, I can do this, you know? And you do it because there's that you can always say I can't, and you can always have a reason not to. Oh, yeah. But it's the difference between you know somebody like you and, and somebody who's successful or does it r- regardless of the level of success, and somebody who just doesn't get started. I definitely have my secret sauce. <laughs> <laughs> no, and it's an, it's no secret. Um, what is it called? Like the there are so many hours you have to put into something. Do you guys know what I'm talking? Mastery about? is ten thousand hours. Okay, so I, when I first found that, yeah. I did the math of where I was at that point, <laughs> and I realized no, yeah. it, it is, but it's true. Yeah. What happens is you need to you need to be so passionate. Right, and so all about something that you're willing to put in those ten thousand hours yeah. because you're gonna fall on your face so many times you're gonna get your heart broken. I had friends that are brought up in this industry that broke my heart. Yeah, what you learn to do is like you said, you know, when you fall, that's okay. You get back up. Don't fall the same way again. Yeah, right. right. And and so what I would suggest to anyone, I'm an entrepreneur. I love I love business concepts and bringing them to life. But in order for you to really get to that level where you can thrive, yeah. you have to put in the time. Yes, and, ma'am. But you, you know what I think is cool about that is all the people that thought like cash register signs when they heard cannabis and they didn't care about cannabis. Yeah. They don't care about yeah. any aspect of cannabis. Yeah. And, they, and they were in today, out tomorrow because they didn't put in 
those hours yeah. and what it really takes to be successful in anything to me, I feel like it's the universe saying, are you willing to pay your dues? Yeah. You know, and once you do, the, uh, you, the oh, universe has your... Are, are you really, yeah. really willing yeah. to pay? Because I'm not sure. And then the third time, like, oh, okay, really, 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 <laughs> yeah. really? Because I'm going to give you another test. Yeah, yes. yeah absolutely. My yeah. Sure test. I believe, I believe that this universe is a living conscience thing. I believe in karma, but I also am, like, madly all about science and math. And I feel like there is a, there's math to being a good person and, and doing being in an industry so long that you just We're going to have to get thriving. out a whiteboard and start talking about the equation. <laughs> <laughs> Back to the, life, the exactly. answer to life and the beginning of life and everything is 42, right? Yeah. You got Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy. Oh, my yeah, gosh. Or, yeah. anyway, classic. No, I mean, I, listen, I mean, this is so interesting because I think um, there's a moment, I know there's a moment in my life when I realized that. You know, and I was, I was, like, I was in my 40s, and I realized that moment. I just went, oh, you know what? I'm going to have to. And I, not only do I, am I going to have to, but I want to. And then it was, not only do I want to, but I want to do this more than anything else. And then, okay, how? You know? And then it was yeah. like fucking fall, 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 Face man, face man. You know, but but it was that moment of just saying, you know, fuck it. This is it. I'm doing this, and that's what I'm going to do. And I remember, you know, um, I was making six figures for a corporation, a big corporation, a uh, Fortune 500 company, on my way up, doing very fine uh, in life. And um, it just wasn't. It just wasn't. You know, it wasn't what I wanted. It wasn't what I what I had aspired to be or, or dreamed of, you know, and um, this, uh, this became that over, over time. We're, you know, we're, what, eight years, nine years yeah, in? Yeah, nine years. Nine years in and, you know, multinational, multimillion, blah, 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 blah. But, yeah, the pain and the suffering, all those things are so valuable, right? And then the second time I'm imagining, because this is my first, this is my first. It's the second time I imagine it's got to be easier, <laughs> because, you, because, because you're like, oh, well, I, fuck, I, I failed before. I could, I could do this, but I, I don't know, man. I, I just, I, I find that, and I talk to people. I'll talk to people all the time that'll be like, oh, I'm gonna go do this, or you know, and you, you're hearing them, but you don't hear the moment. You don't hear the conviction. Yeah. Right. And you, and you're like, yeah, and you can tell them, you know, you're, you're not going to do it, right? And, and I've told friends that, like, no, you're not gonna do it. And no. They, and they get incensed and upset, and then they don't. And I'm like. Sorry, See, you to, just proved I'm it. Trying to, I'm trying to be honest with you, bro. Yeah. Like, like, you know, this is what this takes. Like, this isn't, this isn't like, oh, you know, Johnny come lately, ho hum, da 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 da. This isn't silver spoon bullshit. This is, this is yeah. like, yeah, okay, it sucked yesterday, it sucks today. It's gonna suck for the next month, and maybe the next year, and then maybe, you know, maybe. But you, every day you have to treat it just like you're, it doesn't suck. I, 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 I was a quote the other day from. Uh, Tyson when he was on with Rogan and he, and he said, uh, um, what did he say? He said, uh, uh, fuck, I'm going to miss, I'm going to blow this up completely. But um, he said, you, do the things you hate to do, but do them like you love them. Oh, wow. That's it. <laughs> and and that's what he said, he said that you do the things you hate to do, but you do it like you love it. And he said, without discipline, you're nothing. And that's that change in your mind and in your heart that you go, fuck it. I chose this. So whatever it is and whatever it tastes like, I'm doing it. And Put everything it. into it, man. Yeah, I just go. That's, and, 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 you know, and then, yeah. Yeah, whatever. After that, it's easy. Yeah, and, and I think that it, <laughs> or not. That, it, that actually goes with no matter what industry you're in or what sure. job you have, um, do it like you love it. Even yeah. if it's something you don't like. I, I remember um, having my nightclub. I was 17. I had to clean the urinals of the men's bathroom. Oh, that's a great job. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, but it's like... Get out the hose. You know, <laughs> but, but basically, you know, it's, it's, it's like, do everything like you love it. Be appreciative for everything that you have yeah. in life. We're so grateful to... I mean, we need to be so grateful because, we, because we're so blessed. So having that mindset yeah. really helps us to achieve things and go to the next level. Yeah. Yeah. And even if that, even if that next level isn't, um, a plateau, even if that next level is just like, it's like working out, you know, you reach, you reach a point where, you know, it's not as hard and it's more enjoyable. 
and then you know, and then you go, oh, okay, I've I've reached that next level. It's, business is exactly like that, right? You're like, fuck, this is just so fucking hard and so tedious, and I'm losing my mind doing this thing. And then it changes, and you're like, oh, okay, I just kind of push through that. Now I'm at the next level, and and you know that's so it's not always just a vertical that level. It's all sometimes it's just a matter of how things kind of balance in my mind anyway. If or, just gets or, your, or your mind frame, because I used to look at um, things that came my way and I'd be frustrated by them and angry at them. And I really, I really got into Buddhism and I said, you know what? It's okay. So, so really <laughs> it's the way we look at what's coming at yeah. us because, because no matter where we are in our business, there's always going to be hiccups there's oh, always yeah. going to be problems if we're if we're not growing right because yeah. because growing always has growing pains no matter how big you are right yeah. if you're growing there's always going to be growing pains but it's how you deal with it yeah yeah and i and, and initially i didn't deal with it so good but now i'm just like oh another problem what oh. Bring Bring it. It <laughs> but attitudes everything you. that's exactly <laughs> it it's it's attitudes everything and like you all are saying that those people if you ever see this is something my um i think you're similar colin you know my dad was a boss his dad was a boss my mom was senior management you know came from this family my dad would always hire people from other spaces or categories out industries outside of automotive and i'm like why would you hire this individual from this front desk of a hotel or something yeah. say is like i could just tell she was passionate about what she did no matter what she did you could tell that she yeah. that to most people that's just a job that's just a stepping stone to get to where they really want to go she took it serious and treated it like it was more yeah. and she she had good work ethic i can teach her everything and i'm like wow i mean there's a few things i yeah. took away just like your son does we, we had a great isaac and i had a great conversation earlier but the same thing on what he's gaining from you and gleaning along the way yeah. you know it's anyone that takes it. You recognize those people because you can't train people to be that. There's not enough training or education or programs to instill people to have that kind of mentality, to your point, because your perception's everything and your attitude is everything. So if you're like, oh, this sucks, or oh, I'm entitled to this, you're going down the wrong path. You just have to embrace what you're going through. And either it's a life lesson, to your point, yeah. or it's a life opportunity. But yeah. one way or the other, you're going down that yeah. path. I mean, I, th I think there's, there's throughout my life, I can see all these little little parts where I could have done this, could have done that, whatever. But, um, you know, I never I never pushed. I never went beyond. Yeah. And I, because I, I always did well. I mean, I'm just one of those people that had, you know, you could say, oh, he lives the life of Riley. And the guy's got, you know, blah, 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 blast, whatever. You know, and, and it was, things are easy. I'm, I've got a, a good kid ahead on my shoulders. I'm able to pick stuff up. It's, it's all easy, easy. But the, the change to go from working for somebody else to being completely dependent on me was stunning. Yeah. You know, and it's this moment of just like, <laughs> I, I might fucking die. I think, I think I'm going to die. I, 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 I don't know, but I feel yeah. like maybe this is the moment. When, you know? <laughs> and was, uh, and I, I remember that. just like, And I, I, I had, uh, I had my, uh, both my sons at the time. They're in high school. And it's just this moment of just like, oh, my God, is this, uh, is this, is this the right thing? But then, you know, once you get past that, I always look at fear, so fear, right, fear, whatever it is. I don't care if you're afraid of this, that, the other thing. Fear is this door, and it's this massive, dis, you know, all the evil, nasty shit you could think of on this door. And you see it from a distance. You're like, ah, oh, you know, but you, you have to keep going towards this thing. You're like, oh, I don't know what I'm going to do. I don't know what I'm going to do, man. <laughs> and you're freaking out. And you're like, what the fuck? Oh. Then you, re you, look, you get closer, and you go, oh, there's a handle. You grab the handle and it opens right up and you walk right through. And you know, there's this moment of like, intensity and that fear is unreasonable, unfounded, and it's just like put in your way to check your gut. Knock, knock, knock. Are, are you really, really going to do this? You know? Yeah. That's... Well, uh, one thing I'd like to say too is um, I've incorporated this in my company because I, I feel like at this point in my life I'm a pretty – outstanding human being but i look back on my life and i remember when i made wrong choices in life yeah. and i thank god that i had great parents to guide me to be yeah. better so i have a rule in my corporation where we help people because people do make mistakes but you got to sure. think about this i'm hiring entry-level people often between 12 and 15 dollars an hour 
And they might not have always had the best guidance. Yeah. And I feel like it is my my company's responsibility to give people a chance. So what I personally do is when there's an issue, I call the person personally, me. And yeah. and I've got hundreds of employees. I call them and I talk to them because I want to hear their voice. Yeah. And I want to talk to them about the fact that where you are right now and the decisions that you made, why did you make them? This is the better decision to make. How, and, and talk to them because... I know for myself, I am who I am today because I had the people to help me do that. And I feel like it's my responsibility to help people get get to that level. Now, I will say this. Time is money, and I bootstrapped all my operations. I don't have any investors. I'm all by myself. Wow, So, So, well, that's after having heartaches from having investors (laughs) on other (laughs) projects. But... (laughs) But, Silent um, investor, my ass. Yeah. <laughs> but I, I, I have this three strikes you're out rule, but I take it upon myself to make that phone yeah. call and to be that person's parent because, look, at the end of the day, these people are, like, not not my biological child, but no, I feel... invested. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm deeply invested, and I also hope that I'm able to make a big difference in their life. So. I wonder, yeah, I think that, listen, I mean, that... Right, there's a connection. You have to have it because you've, you're actually employed this person. So that not only that, you've taken on responsibility for their well-being. And so for me, it's, you know, make sure there's work, making sure that there's a, a ability. And then I, we like to do upward mobility, so I'd like to hire from within and, and all that stuff. But, um, you know, it's, it, you know, I'd rather err on the side of, of, of being, you know, cautious and kind or cautious and, um, and um softer than on the other side you know because i find even though people take kindness for weakness it, it i find that you know you can you can burn something that could be really precious if you if you overreact to somebody's you know foibles or mistakes or something but uh, you know sometimes they tell you right away who they are and you just gotta you know <laughs> <laughs> spade is spade cut, cord. <laughs> yeah, cut it cut it hey, done 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 we're yeah, moving on there's your sign he's yeah, a base yeah. good good call good call but um it's interesting. I mean, that's I, I find that fascinating. Uh, that's a really interesting journey. That's a lot of different companies. That's a lot of different entities to start, and I, that's not a big span of time. Okay, so can I tell you about the last two that I'm really excited about? Sure. <laughs> All right. Cause I, I, I would expect nothing less. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, I'm really excited because I think oftentimes, especially when you're in industry so long, for instance, um, having been in the industry since 2013, I and I work 12 to 15 hours a day every single day. This yeah. is this is what I live. So when someone says, "Oh, can you come to my networking group?" I'm like, "Fuck no!" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, "No, I can't." Like, time is and, money. <laughs> but, but it's like I don't. Ha- I literally don't have time in the day. Do I wish I could be? Do I send my people to do it? Yes. Yeah. But. I, I wanted to do something different and unique. So um, as I started to build out the staffing agency into the newly legalized markets, I realized that most of these employees have never worked in the cannabis industry. And we yeah. needed a platform to be able to teach them about um, compliance, regulations, standard operating procedures, technique for cultivation, production, and dispensary. Yeah. So I started this online educational platform called Cannabis Community College. On that platform, we just teach that. It did so well. I started thinking, why would I stop there? Yeah. Why, like, why don't we, why don't we build this out globally and have education all around the globe? Now, this was just a concept in my mind as an entrepreneur, and you know, yeah. I like to build things. So I started reaching out to cannabis pioneers in each of the countries. The it was the most amazing experience of my life the last three months sincerely where i'm talking to people literally from over 20 countries about what they are doing in the cannabis industry what is the ancient origins where is it now where is legalization where is it going yeah and it's fascinating so i started this global cannabis industry networking group and we're just getting ready to launch our first panel is going to be on june 30th and in some countries, that's July 1st. I'm, I'm literally on the phone from 6 in the morning until 9 p.m. each night, 
every night doing this. So I've learned a lot about the different time zones. <laughs> <laughs> you start memorizing them. It's scary. Let me tell you. <laughs> it does, yeah. I'm like, Australia is 17 hours ahead. Yes. Japan is it's, nine it's hours It's just ahead. weird how your brain yeah. starts to work. Yep. So the, Metric. The, got it. <laughs> I think metrics amazing. By the way, well, that's a whole another conversation. But it is, it, but we're we're just too a little too yeah. obtuse here. We're sticking to imperial. Yeah. Well, well, okay, but one, that, one of only three countries in the world, might I add. But you know what? There, there are some. There are some. This is why I think this could be a whole another conversation because um, I'm into some pretty interesting things, and I always thought like metric, 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 metric. But there are some very fascinating things about the numbers. I'm. A huge fan. You're a car enthusiast <laughs> of of um, Nikola Tesla. Yeah. And the three six nine, and so just <laughs> so like like, like yeah. we could have an entire panel on this. Sure. But um, wow, do I digress? Where was I at? <laughs> <laughs> no, you were cruising along. Um, Nikola Tesla your, in your, the metric system. Yeah, well, oh. the numbers. Okay. So so. We were also talking about the, uh, the the global group that you're putting yeah. together and, and the uh, the time zones. Yeah, there we go. There, there we you are. are. So GMT for the win. We, we're having our first um, online forum the June thirtieth and the first July first yeah. because of the time zones. That's where I was. Yeah. <laughs> right. Sorry. I pulled it together. <laughs> um, anyway, the the first topic is going to be about the ancient origins of cannabis in that country and where is the status of legalization today and like the insights of where it's going in that country. And I've already got over 20 countries involved in this. Uh And I'm talking heavy hitters in in each country. Just before we got on this panel, you were talking about the Emerald Cup. We've got 10 Uh here in the United States, but like I'm talking even in China, I've got um, Apple Zing, who did the only um, two hemp uh, conventions in Hong Kong. Um, I've got, like I said, over 20 countries, including far out places like India and Thailand and everywhere you can imagine. So everywhere that's legal, I've got them on it, but everywhere that's almost legal and also completely fascinating like country or continent you know, that, that's going in that direction. So the purpose of it really is to bring global awareness, uh, what's going on. And I think at this day in our lives, it's really nice to connect with people who have a like mind, vision, yeah. and, and goal, and then you get to network with these people, right? I mean... Yeah. In the international so, so stage is awesome. You, you started with, with the community college and then the education side of it and I thought we we're going to kind of go off in that direction I, I appreciate what you were just saying but I'm, I have a moment here I'm kind of curious like you know because we were talking early on because there was a lot of little schools that popped up and said hey we, you know we're going to do cultivation training blah 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 and the, the cannabis university here blah 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 whatever and there's still a couple of them out there and they may all be successful I don't know but hmm. I always wondered like why because we always wanted to be part of that right from the education perspective because it makes sense because we do cultivation right so we always thought that would be a great place to be involved um so your statement about that is like do you see that growing do you see oh that? when like like in leaps and folds so i actually started the global <laughs> cannabis industry networking group as a networking group that exists on the cannabis community college platform be like just like any university that you yeah. go to are you part of the skull and bones yeah. right yeah. we actually have a, a a group that's called the <laughs> the, the the i think it's there are bongs and bones <laughs> great perfect <laughs> yeah it sounds perfect yeah, it sounds right. <laughs> there's, <laughs> there's so Nailed many yeah. there, there's so there's so many different networking groups that are on the platform but the one that i became deeply invested in was the global one. So yeah. the night the, what we're doing on the global cannabis, um, I'm sorry, on the cannabis community college platform is we started off where we're teaching 
state compliance, rules, regulations, yeah. Um, technique for cultivation, production, and dispensary for people that are looking to get a job in cannabis so that we can teach all of the state required education right. so that they can walk into a facility and know what they're doing. Right. Now, when that did as well as it did, I thought, why am I not teaching this to the rest of the world? And as I started those global conversations with people, yeah. I realized there's a real need for this. So teaching people from... Like it's there's there's multiple layers teaching people from um, seed right or or, or um, clones all the way to a cultivation. We're pr we're putting together a curriculum right now for bud camp, and we're trying we're translating that into multiple languages. Wow! So we really want to teach people. So, who, so how do you do that? I mean, how do you put together a curriculum? Who's doing that? Okay, so because I mean, <laughs> not, you're not doing the curriculums, yeah. No, no. Yeah. so what I've done, it's 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 nice. It's like this is why the ten thousand hours really yeah. comes into play because <laughs> you meet people along the way. So yeah. this guy, his name's JJ. He has been one of my biggest customers in the industry for many many years. It's not JJ Walker, is it? No, but okay. is, that, is that a drink? <laughs> no. He's in the industry. <laughs> he's, I was thinking Johnny he's Walker. Walker. You're thinking Johnny. I get yeah. it. Yeah, JJ Johnny. Okay. He's the guy out of Colorado. He's a, he's a real, he's not in my imagination. <laughs> I'll introduce I, you. No, I've got a Johnny Walker in Oklahoma. Uh, I've got a Johnny Walker in Oklahoma. Nice. Oh, yeah. my gosh. Yeah. So anyway, um, I get easily sidetracked. You <laughs> I'm a Johnny Walker fan, it's all right. by the way, so it's totally cool. You yeah. can be sidetracked. <laughs> All right, so um, so anyway, we're the JJ has been one of my biggest um, customers, yeah. and he's been in the industry. He's been growing for twenty years, and I just told him about the project that we're doing, and he had the the passion to help me put it together. And then I've spoken to these different people in the other countries, and they say they will work together with me to translate it to put it into other cr countries, uh, dialects or uh, languages, mm -hmm. and. Like I said earlier, um, when you guys were on a call with uh, Af about Africa, yeah, yeah, I was on a call earlier today about Africa where I learned that some people are literally making wages of two dollars and fifty cents a day. Yeah, and I said, I want to do this same education. I want to make it completely free of charge. They don't have access to the internet. So what I want to do is put it all together, send it over, pay to have it put in print, and share it with everybody. I mean, that's this, a, that's a big undertaking in and of itself. Not really, yeah. though. You, you, it's not. It's really. It's it's really. It's, See, this is what happens to entrepreneurs. Just, yeah. Once they become successful, they're like, "Fuck, I can do anything." Yeah, that's not a big deal. I what just say about? start at one country at a time. There's 53 <laughs> yeah. countries yeah. on that continent. Yeah, yeah it's not a big lot, deal. We can handle it. We'll yeah. start at the bottom, work our way up. I'll help you. That's, I mean, that's really cool. We can do yeah. it. See, see, Lance, you see why I have a professional crush? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but you're fearless. Like, you, you're yeah. like, yeah, this is, and that's the point. Like, it doesn't matter. You're like, whatever. Yeah, we'll do it. This is what you do. Oh, okay. Yeah. But most people would get stuck right at the beginning and go, I, I, uh, 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 yeah, they don't even the start, it, right? Really. And, 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 yeah. and here you are, like, yeah, no, this I is think what you it, do. I think it's about having, find the guy. Like, um, I think it's about having global conversations. So for me today, I just had an amazing conversation with a lady that's in Colombia. Do you, do you know, I've had multiple conversations with people in Colombia, but I just learned today because she's a doctor that the people of Colombia cannot buy medicine from the compound pharmacy because they can't afford it. Now, you've got people coming into Colombia that are doing their grows and everything else. Licensed producers from Canada. Yeah. And, and, and <laughs> why in the world Stating is there not some like social obligation to, to donate 10%? Like you're growing on the land of Colombia, yet the people of Colombia can't access it. So two things that I want to do there. A, I want to make like a percentage that has to go to those compound pharmacies for the locals. Mm -hmm. And B, I want to teach the locals how to grow because – as a local Colombian, you can grow 20 plants. We, I want to teach Colombians how to grow their own medicine. 20 plants is quite a bit. It's yeah. a lot. Yeah, that's it's a lot. It could be a lot of trees. That was, that was, a, lot, that was a lot more than what I was allowed to do in, in Six. California. I know yeah. that. 
Yeah. At three uh, now. So <laughs> medical. No. Anyway. <laughs> yeah. Anyway, no look, man, I, yeah. I, that's interesting. I think um, uh, I've always been interested in the educational portion of it, and I think it would be great if maybe we can, you know, help out on the cultivation side or the, you know, harvesting side. Um, you know, I would love that. So, well, now is a good yeah. time to share that uh, we are supporting, <laughs> volunteered uh, to help her out on the on the global uh, network front. So, I'm uh, the last to know it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> how this goes, right? I'm the she, last guy. Like, oh, hey, by the way. She's all, do you want to be a brand ambassador? No, I'm sorry. Do you want to be an ambassador? I'm the, the terms ambassador or what was the other? Um, diplomat. Diplomat. <laughs> and I was like, I don't know if I can claim a specific country. Because <laughs> but yeah, I'm looking forward Both to of them this. Have is immunity, on the other front. I think so. That's cool. Totally <laughs> legit. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, that's why I was so excited. I'm like, I got to plug you into my network because she's been doing a phenomenal job on her own. Yeah. But then I was like, there are some great people I can introduce you to so, in Australia and Chile. And we just, yeah, totally geeked right, so everybody. Bounce up and down. Where are we at on time? Yeah, we could go wrap it up soon. <laughs> How about we wrap it up no, with no, it? Wait, gotta, we'll do a part two. More stuff Let's I want to talk about. Two. Wait a second. What time we got? What time is it? it we're at an hour oh eight. Oh but yes. The first can, eight can, minutes. Can, was, can, can I? Can I make yeah. a suggestion? Yeah, you can. All right. So on Days and Confucius, the the show that I'm about to launch. So this YouTube. is what I'm asking about. I'm about <laughs> that, to do this. That's so different. Sorry. The Can plug. Tell me all the about Days plug. and Confucius. But, but I want us to. Okay. So I, what I want us to do is just like something that I'm going to do on that. So Days and Confucius is going to be a YouTube channel talking about all kinds of far out ideas with regards to spirituality, philosophy, aliens, quantum physics. You know, all of the kind of mind-bending things that you can talk about and all the directions that you can go. And for each of the people that will be on the show, they'll get a box that comes in the mail. I know we're on a podcast, so you can't see. The box Whoa. is fucking amazing. Yeah, the box it's, it's is pretty really, rad. It's a really cool, amazing box, honestly. I just, I just heard that we can share a yeah, photo. I'll, I'll take a picture. <laughs> okay. Yeah. It, it might be the coolest box I think I've seen, to be honest. I, took, I, I put a lot of time and effort into the box because... I really wanted people to get into the the concept that we can really bond together on far out ideas and that we can grow and evolve talking about things other than Genetics, growing. <laughs> I, I love it. I lo I, actually, genetics is one of my favorite topics. Yeah. But um, Fino but, meet Gino, <laughs> Gino meet chemo. <laughs> it's love at first sight. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> but all anyway, right. all right. So let's do, let's do this. We grab the box and we're gonna we're gonna open up the fortune cookie because oh the, yeah okay. oh yeah the fortune cookie. Box. So so the, the and this is a cool and perfect timing. I have to add because of course Colin's like, why are we doing something like that? I'm like, funny yeah, you mentioned I'm, this I'm is something we're we'll working. <laughs> going, you guys are slacking. And this is literally, I'm like, Black City. we are working so, on welcome kits. So, 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 ever, so wait a second. That so, is the package for the fortune cookie. So everyone's heard of the cult classic film, Dazed and Confused. I just right? watched a documentary on it. But this YouTube channel will be Dazed and Confucius, where we talk philosophy and all those other far out ideas. But every, <laughs> every box comes with a fortune cookie cookie because <laughs> because because uh confucius was chinese and so inside of that so fortune cookie that's by the way made by go. chick with a whisk crack really crack it chick with a whisk yep oh, oh he now just the, cracked the it he, well, oh you lost some of the precious on the ground now I can do don't worry. have a little can bit can i eat Man, some of that <laughs> <laughs> Now, fun there fact, you know. fortune cookies were invented in L.A. I'm just going to throw that out there. Yeah. But Confucius does come from China. <laughs> so, <laughs> Oh, my hey, gosh, listen, you guys man. are mowing. Obviously, it's dinner time. <laughs> yeah, listen, listen, listen. There's nothing wrong with Here the fortune cookies. No, no, hold on a second. Oh, no. Before, no, before, sure. before you do this, this no. is what has to happen. You read the fortune cookie. Yeah. No. Um, and, then you, and, then, and you put yourself into the shoes of the philosopher. You say... What do you think the philosopher meant when he said this? And then you do your interpretation, and then okay. I'll do mine. Okay, here we this go. This is a fun OT exercise. So here's, the, here's the quote, and then I need to interpret the quote? Yes. All right. so hopefully I don't butcher this too bad. The words are all small, so we should be good. <laughs> <laughs> uh, there are two things that a person should never be angry at. What they can help and what they cannot. Oh. Hmm. 
But interesting. Well, you you go first. Oh, yeah, yeah, throw you the ball. I have the potato. I get the potato. I got the potato. Got Can the you potato. read it one more time? No, 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 no. Now you have to wait. This is a test. You have to wait. This is only a test. test. <laughs> yes, it is. Uh, no, I mean it's very. It's it's. I I think you know, we're we're all kind of confined. Those of us who who've been through this enough confine ourselves to the things we have control over, right? And we try not to let the things that are outside of that overpower and influence our, our, our direction. And, you know, there's, there's always stuff in life that you can't do anything about. Yeah. And, you know, we laugh because I, I'm, I get all bent out of shape. I got some ass monkey, pardon my language, but it's <laughs> ripping me off on my, on my equipment. And I think, you know, I could be mad and, and it doesn't make any difference because I can't do anything about it. And, uh, it, that, you know, so that's the kind of thing to me, this is, this is talking about your, the influence of things from the outside in. And honestly, the only thing you control is your attitude, your drive, and, and that's it. Oh. I mean, you know, can't, can't control, you can't even control if you're gonna wake up in the morning. I yeah. can anyway. I do usually about the same time, however. Oh my gosh, I, can, I do too. You know, and it's, you know. it's getting earlier and earlier, <laughs> man. Right? And later we'll talk about Ray Kurzweil and how we might be able to live forever and just wake up and wake up and wake up and wake up. I just up. wanna take a nap now, you're making me <laughs> tired. <laughs> yeah, that'll definitely be a part two I love show naps, for sure. By the way. So naps are key. Re- re- I'll, re- I'll reread it for okay, you. Okay, perfect. <laughs> <laughs> You're funny. Um, there are two things a person should never be angry at: what they can help and what they cannot. And I don't know. The first thing popped in my head. I have a lot of sayings, and I keep threatening to write a book, <laughs> and I'll get to it. Um, but I agree. I always talk about, and Colin Sermon say this too, the infinite and the finite. And that's exactly it. That, that's what I have to say is, you know, you can't be angry. You know, if, if you can help, if you can make an impact, then that should always be something that you look at as a positive. Because that means that you are able to make an influence on that outcome. And that can be literally or metaphorically. We're just joking around about genotype, phenotype, and chemotype. You know, genotype, you're giving, you're giving those genetics. You can influence them, but you still start with something that you did not have any control over. And this is why I like growing. Because when it comes to phenotype, which is the outside or the environmental factors, I have absolute control over what I water and what I feed and how much sunlight and, and how much darkness and all those things I have control and influence over that outcome. But then the chemo type, a lot of people don't think about, that goes back to the end user. You know, how your endocannabinoid system processes cannabis, that's up to you. I can only give you the flower. And, yeah. and so Interesting. kind of tying that into cannabis. But I agree, you can't be over that. It, On a it, cannabis show, Lance, you're going to go all the way back. I'm going to go full in, circle. Tie it in with the oh cannabis Oh, my thing. gosh. How'd it go there? I know, right? I'm a total can of geek. Um, so, yeah. You know what? It, I can't agree with you more. Yeah. <laughs> I can't agree with you more. Like that. <laughs> and those, they cannot. That's exactly, that's the outside. Like, you, you nailed it, man. There's things that you have finite control. You can't, death and taxes, man. So played out, but so true. Yeah, I'm so still going to register that car in Oregon, though. I'm still taking out. <laughs> yep. Yeah. Pay exactly. taxes and taking out. Yep. <laughs> so, all right. Now, this is the new me, by the way. The oh. new, the, are you going to do the old you interpretation? Oh, you don't, you don't want to see that. Like, uh, the, the old me would, like, curse and... The glasses come off. <laughs> oh, I think the old me is coming out. <laughs> all right. So, me, having been through everything I've been through in this industry and... Like you mentioned, you know, there's there's so many ways to fall, and a lot of times those falls come with hurt, like painful hurt, not just like it's never about money or business, but it's about um, um, how you're going to advance in the industry and the relationships along the way. And I think that when this talks about anger, I really think when it says there's two things you shouldn't get angry about. I think there's really not much you should ever get angry about. I think that your direction needs to be different than anger. It needs to be that of love. And and frust- it can be frustration, right? <laughs> frustration. I don't think but- you do anything about that. It's going to be frustration. Yeah. This right? is like when your parents used to say, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. And you're like, ah, shit. That's worse. Yeah. yeah. Dang it. Damn it. <laughs> Just have that knee jerk reaction. Because yeah, disappointment lasts forever. Oh my gosh. Yes. <laughs> so <laughs> that just, was deep. <laughs> so, so, so really like just having the difference mm. of perspective on, 
on anger and, and removing anger from your life because anger is a part of fear and I don't think that any of us can really evolve in that environment and I think that we need to have a different approach, so. Uh, I wanna just expand on the one that you just said, which I think is key. Anger is actually a reaction to fear, right? So the one interesting thing about us as humans is we tend to let emotion drive, yeah. but emotion is always reactive to whatever circumstance, right? So you can say, I wanna be happy, but you can't force yourself to be happy something that somebody else does might make you happy, something you did might make you happy, right? So mm -hmm. that's an emotional response to an outside stimulus. Anger is the same thing, but oftentimes what happens is we go, oh, you get angry and then you feed on that and you let anger be the driving force instead of looking at what's the source? What am I afraid of? What's happening here? So I just, I mean, it, I just think about that all the time. Like, cause we're, you know, we're emotional beings. We're all like, you know, get all up in our head and all emotional and it's yep. like, oh, completely irrational by the way. But, um, you know, that emotional thing can be checked and success is a big part of checking emotion and just, yeah. you know, it, you know, maybe it takes a minute <laughs> You can take a deep breath. Maybe don't answer that phone call or that text or that email yet. Wait and, yeah. then, and then measure yourself, you know? And that affects most people. A lot of people don't know just something curveball it was a criminal justice major that's one thing we learned when we were trying to this is so i'm sorry it's a weird tangent but when we were studying serial killers that's why they're the biggest enigma because only one percent of the populace i know it's crazy i know call it look at he's leaning he, he, in. he said weird tangent i'm talking like really weird <laughs> really weird right there. <laughs> only one percent of the population can't feel remorse or empathy so wow. that's the one explanation that at least the fbi were starting to say well that's why there's no rhyme or reason to those individuals, because to your point, there's no emotion. They have yeah. zero emotion. Yeah. So Dahmer, okay, West Side Street, oh, all of a sudden it makes, like they yeah. can't sense emotion. So there's no empathy, there's no sympathy, there's no remorse, there's no anger, there's no, it's just literally blank face. It's insane. So you're right, almost every human has emotion, and that's what drives yeah. so many decisions. You gotta be careful with it, that's the thing, do you? I mean, you gotta yeah. be. I think that the, the like we're going on farther down the road. We're I know. an hour and a half. We might have but, to but split this you, into a two part series. Right. I when think you, that's when you're happening. talking about when you're talking about success, there's a couple of things like there, there's all this like correlation between successful people and grade point averages. And, uh, and, and, you know, a lot of C students are more successful than A students. Um, and that's statistically speaking. That's yeah. not, that's not. I was a Z again. student. No, but me no yeah. yeah. Street smarts for the win. Jeez. Dude. <laughs> College was too slow <laughs> for me. I don't yeah, know. Yeah, about you guys. Not, not, not my job. <laughs> no. but, but, um, but there's also these other things. And the most, uh, the biggest factor in, in success, I think, uh, I don't know, I'll have to look at the, where that comes from, but is, is emotional control. And it's just the ability to detach from the reactivity. Mm -hmm. of a situation and the volatility of the situation and to be, be level-headed in, in, in your response. And, and that gets you through those things instead of just, you know, f ruining a relationship with stoicism. a company. Stoicism. Have you learned about Stoic? Sto okay, stoicism? Okay, so, so yeah. I, I have learned because you know, like I... Like the Greek Stoics from way yes, back? Yeah. I, would, I was mm -hmm. very reactive. And in fact, one of my favorite customers, when he said something to me one day on the phone, I said... I will destroy you. <laughs> yes. And I By up, the powers of gray skull. Yeah. And, and I hung up the phone and it's like, where the, you know, nah. and, and this too is, much emotion. This is someone I love and I admire in the industry and we are still friends to this day, but it's, it's, it's growing, it's evolving, it's changing. It's looking at yourself and stoicism really helped me looking at the philosophy of stoicism. Right. Yeah. And, and, and being that person that's able to, to sit and to think and to hold ideas instead of being reactionary. Yeah. I, I have a new philosophy. When, when I have something I don't like happen to me, instead of reacting there, I'll say, let's talk tomorrow. Yeah. Because I know that overnight process is yeah. going to change everything. Everything. And, and you, you know, you walk into this, every situation is blind from every, you know, you, you only see the, the, the screen you see. I think about it like life is like a movie. I only see the screen I have, right? You guys are all in it, 
I have to turn this way to see you. And you know what Our I mean? cameras so, but, are at different I, yeah, angles. But, but your, <laughs> your cameras are all at different angles. Yeah. We're all experiencing the yeah. same moment. But I have no idea how breakfast was for you, Lance. I have no idea. Underwhelming. You know, yeah, don't underwhelm. <laughs> I don't have any idea what, what life has presented for you for this day. And for me to make assumptions about those things and to punish you, you know, through reactivity or, or aggression or, or whatever means I happen to have at my evil deploy, um, is, is wrong. And, and it also punishes the, or, or, or stunts the relationship or the opportunity for a relationship. And so you just, you know, you have to take that moment because you just really don't know. Somebody must have, you know, the breakfast might have been bad. I mean, it might have been bad. Didn't ruin my day. Set the whole fucking thing off, and you're just like, I am not doing today. And uh, yeah, Cullen, you pissed me off, so fuck off. And I'm like, (laughs) well, here we are. I'm so not one of those people. Yeah, yeah, you're not. I mean, you're about as mellow. He's about to, I'm going to figure out how to ruffle it, but I think, you know, at this point, he's pretty much. I want to figure out how to ruffle it, too. (laughs) Yeah, they'll find it. There's an edge. Don't worry. I'll let you know if I find it. But there's there's one in there somewhere. But, uh, but, you know, this this is the whole thing about intercommunication, right? I always thought that out of high school, you know, everybody would grow the fuck up, and it turned out they didn't. Oh no, yeah, they didn't. I'm like, oh, you guys are still acting like you are fucking teenagers. I thought there was some kind of maturity that happened in this world, and it just didn't seem to happen. And I'm like, okay, well, I'll live on my my planet and be measured. And and, and you know, sometimes people take that as being cold or aloof, or 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 not engaged or not emotional. And it's no, it's just me giving you space to figure out what the fuck's going on so that we can still have friendship here because I'm yeah. not going to bite your head off yeah. over this little thing. Now, I get mad and I get angry and I have emotional – and sometimes it's important. Like when I'm talking to the team and trying to get people pumped up, it's time to well, have but that's a little passion. bit of that. But that's passion. That's not anger. That's passion, it, which you have to It can spill. <laughs> it can hey. spill. Well, frustration. <laughs> you know. so, so, so I know we've got to close out. Can we close out with a little fast game? I think I think this oh, is going to be a two part. So how, I think how hard a game? We how can hard go, a game is this? We can be? go for a little it's bit longer. Real, no, it's really easy. It's really really easy. Okay, I want. I know we've got to close out this game. Plus, no. I've had a few glasses of rosé. <laughs> yes, a few. All right. So. <laughs> Excuse me, I think that's a few bottles of rose <laughs> for share, the audience. I share. Yes, you did. That's very, very generous. Sharing is caring. Yeah. <laughs> All right. But no, so, we have time. This is going to be a two-parter. Trust oh, me. You're so, good. So Roll we can it. just chit-chat for yep. yeah. another 20 Another minutes. 20 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. We got 20 more. Um, I've got yeah. lots to say, but so can, <laughs> can we play my closing yeah, game we, we anyway? Play yeah, game anyway. Closing. Right. Then we'll critique it. Yeah. All right. So... <laughs> so <laughs> There's that. There's that side of the world. Growing up, I just, you know, Kansas is amazing, right? But like most places in the world, people engage by talking about things and oftentimes are gossip and just small mindedness. And in college, I just realized I don't like these conversations. So I would make up games to play with my friends so that we could have um, higher level conversations. In- intellectual conversations? Just, I mean. Philosophical? Yeah. Philosophical? No, not so much. <laughs> is there cannabis involved? Because that'd be cool if there was. There were things involved. Oh, gosh. Well, it was it was the time of experimentation for everyone. <laughs> At any rate. For Marco and I, that was just growing up in the Bay Area. <laughs> it was always, there was always something new. At any rate, um, I also was going to Washburn University, a great university, and I had an elective class, which was um, <laughs> psychology. Oh, I, oh, I dropped that class like coming. a hot potato. <laughs> okay, now listen. Sociology. Now, I, I should have never even told you this before I started the question. Okay, can we please all agree? I'm about to ask a question to everyone. And I'm gonna snap. I'm gonna clap my hands as soon as I ask the question, and you have to answer it into your microphones as soon as I ask the question. If you don't, if you stop to think about it, it's it's not relevant. Wow! It has to be the first thing that pops into your head. I'm completely pigeonholed right now. <laughs> like there's no possible way to win this game. I quit. There's there's no winners. Come on. Oh, uh, that's the only games. Oh, are. Everyone gets a trophy. Uh, what? That, yeah. For, uh, yes. Uh, millennial generation. Look. So out. is this the first person to answer, or is this a question to each person individually? Where's my buzzard? This is what happens. I'm gonna ask you each. I'm gonna ask one question. You both are gonna answer it. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Maybe. Just 
<laughs> just, just, just know this, and I will not ask you anymore if you don't answer it immediately. Like I said, it doesn't have to be the right answer. It just has to be whatever pops into your head. Can I start with um? No. You can say um right now. Say it. Um. Okay. Now you can't say it again. <laughs> All right. Ready? One, two, three. What's your favorite animal? Dog. Lion. What'd you say? Lion. Dog. And you said dog. Family crest. Okay. Sorry. Now listen. In your head, in your head, don't say it out loud. What are the three words that you would use to describe a dog and a lion? Don't say it out loud. Don't say it. Don't say it. Lion and a okay. dog. Okay. Whatever. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody can see me pointing. <laughs> yeah. Well, Marco's filming it, so there's that. Okay, okay. So, so I want you to give me the three words that you would use to describe that animal. Not the way that it looks, but it's, its personality, its character, its essence. Okay, tell me when you're both ready with your three words. Actually, do, is there a pen here? Oh. Yeah. I'm, oh. I'm Everybody ready. gets a pen. I'll find a pen. Oh right. my gosh! See now it's getting real because there's actual documentation. Oh, you can you you can like thrash. We can burn this at the end. It could be like a little yeah, ayahuasca ceremony. It has been written. It's, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> yeah, you know. Yeah. Once it's down, it's down. Okay. While he's getting a pen, should we talk about anything else? I don't know. What else is there to talk about? A lot, apparently. <laughs> yeah, there's plenty to talk about. So aside from all of the multiple things you got going on which is which is a lot and it's actually kind of interesting and uh actually you make me feel tired at this moment i feel like <laughs> I'm, I'm behind in my in my productivity um but um you know so, so do you do you ever find that you know new projects or new things uh are, are are inhibiting or is it just you know just you expand what you can at this new thing or do you lose uh, do you lose, you know, a step on something that's in work because you get passionate about something that's new? You're um, like, oh, this is fucking on fire right now. I am going to go all in on this. I, um, I can't, or do I can't, you just have, you just no, don't sleep. No, I, okay. So two things. Number one, I definitely get caught up in my old school way of doing things. But the moment something new is introduced to me, it's like, boom. So I don't know if that's what is your question, but. I thought it was. Um, if it is, let me answer it. So, no, you're doing good. That's okay. Great. Great. Okay. Yeah. So for me, what happened was there I was in my world doing everything that I do here locally, right? And I want. I started Cannabis Community College, but I would actually travel to other cities. I would get rooms. I would sell tickets. I would bring people in. I am 44 years old, so I did not know that Zoom was a thing. Because of COVID happening, I realized that Zoom was real, and all of a sudden, I was able to launch in 14 different states. When I learned of technology, I jump on it like a rocket space. I'm telling you, it's just like if aliens were to come down to here, I would jump on their spaceship and go off to Andromeda or wherever else. Andromeda, I like that. Well, I'm. That's coming I, up. I mean, Elon's working on it really, really hard. He's and working on Mars. I'm. I'm talking about. I'll leave this galaxy. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. One step at a time. One step at a time. Right? Yeah, come on. The military. The military right. just declassified their their tracking of UFOs. So, and that's just well, unidentified. One step at a time. One step, yeah, at a time. one step at a time. Yeah. But you asked me how I feel about that, and and <laughs> what I did. I, and, and what I will say is I definitely, like, I know how to work old school, but any time I can grasp onto a technology that's new, yeah. I do. And I do it with, like, all my heart and soul because I'm a technology person. I, lo I love it. I know, it's, I know it's the future. Why would I struggle and keep the past? The, the past was either today or yesterday. The future is tomorrow, mm. and if I'm going to wake up in tomorrow, I don't want to be living in today or yesterday. There's no future living in the past. That's one of my sayings. And I like that saying. There's a reason why the rearview mirrors are so small. That's Same it. thing. You got to so, look through the windscreen. Got to look through the windscreen. That's baby. where the opportunities at. It's all about what's up ahead. Yeah. Okay, are you guys ready to write down your answers? Uh, Everybody? Everything's oh. down. Yes. <laughs> yep. Okay. Now. Yeah. Read your answers. Um, well, so I. I'm the dog guy, and I, I said uh, obedient, loyal, and loving. Hey, oh. I, I huh. just want to hug you. 
hug. <laughs> like a dog. It's, 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 all dogs are huggable. I get it. I totally get it. Yeah. But yours, okay, okay, okay. It's like that pit bull that attacked you. Yeah, you. Yeah, your you, yeah, pit bull that like almost bit off my arm as which, I tried which, to rub which, it. Which is not not well, she's obedient. Good, <laughs> but no. it's very loyal and very loving. Yeah. He didn't do that. He just made a little snip, and it was cute. She's very yeah. protective. Yeah. She, she like, is. This is my baby. Okay, she so. even looks at me different with a hat. She's yeah, she's yeah, learning. She's yeah. learning. It's nice. So, All right. Um, for Lance, go ahead. Yes, for lion, I put uh, methodical, loyal, and faithful, and. I don't know. I just think lions, you know, when you see them, not that I have, I know we were talking about Africa earlier and I haven't done a safari, but, you know, watching the footage, you just see how, you know, how methodical they are when they're set to do something, they put their mind to it and they do it. You know, I mean, they're very determined. Yeah. And then I feel like they're loyal. Like you see how the packs are and how they run. The, and... the females are definitely oh, yeah. loyal. Yeah. That's, that's a family. Yeah. The it males is a are kind of like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. You're here until the next guy comes along. Yeah. 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 That's how that goes. <laughs> Little unique in that. But but yeah, I do feel to your point. Yeah, it is. It's it's that it is a pack. I know that's more wolves. I know there's another It's also lions family. are very like it's a majestic thing. It's yeah. a, yeah, pride. It's a pride. They even pride. call it their pride. Well, it's a pride. pride. Yeah. Right? Yes, it is a pride. Thank you. Yeah. See? Yeah. I know it's a we'll murder get you there. Of Don't worry, Thank we'll you. get you there. We'll I know there. it's hard to I know it's not a flock of seagull. I learned that. It's a murder <laughs> so of seagull. You, so and you, faithful was my last. Sorry, oh. faithful. Because I think they are. They are faithful to their pride. Yes. <laughs> See, ladies, he's faithful <laughs> to, 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 his pride, to his pride. To my pride. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm moving to Utah. The way you guys are talking. <laughs> Look out, St. George. <laughs> Coming okay. on up. So, so um, now, psychology 101. I was in that class, and I'll never forget because I was a bit of a thing in that place where I went. And these, the teacher. And and this is these are teachers that they they they're not just teachers but they are actually active in their profession, which is what oh, I nice. really liked about the nice. university. And so, I remember when they came to me and I said, "I've got a, a dolphin and a chimpanzee," and he says, "You can't choose two. And I said, "But I have two. Fine, <laughs> you're you're always weird. Everything you do." We go around the class, and this is where you, your seats are going like this, uh, right? Like yeah. stacked up, seating. stadium yeah. seating. This yeah. is this is professional shit. So you had like how many in the club? Was this like a hundred? They crammed like it, fifty in mine, and it was too. Oh, it was it was at least. Uh, if I had to add up, it was fifty to hundred. Yeah, for sure. So it's larger. Yeah, yeah. and so th- then he says, write down the three words that you would describe those animals as, and it was fascinating to me that I use the same three words for both animals. Mm. And this is why I give credibility to this question. So I said a dolphin and a chimpanzee. But the three words that I used to describe it were exactly the same. At the end of the... I didn't know where he was going. I was oh, like, "What were the three words?" There's going to be a part three. Yeah, of we're going to be suspense. <laughs> to be is continued killing me. next yeah. time. Yeah. Okay. Industry born. <laughs> yeah. Just kidding. It's silly. I was 18, so it was cute, fun, and intelligent. Oh, well, that's cute. So sounds yeah. like 18. That's cute, <laughs> right? Yeah. At any rate, um, <laughs> another round of Bartles and James girls. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally t- I totally dated myself. Yeah, Sorry, you did. Zima for the win. Yeah, yeah good, luck with Z- good, good luck with pulling out Zima. Man. And you can Come still on. purchase that in Japan, just for the record. Zima Dude, is still best, being sold in Japan. The best Zima commercial was in pulling himself off the fucking hot sofa. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. <laughs> you remember? I do. You do man. remember, yeah. yeah. I just remember that came That's out. That's how long like, Zima lasted, one man, commercial. The cops can't smell it. They can't, <laughs> <laughs> they can't recognize it. It looks like 7-Up in my bottle. Wow, just we perfect. need a Zima for cannabis. Is that is that distillate? Actually, yeah. no, that's uh, Keith Cola has a sparkling water that not to do a, a plug, but um, shameless plug. I know, by totally the way. shameless. Eric by the Knudsen, way, guys, you that, owe me. That was a plug, yeah. <laughs> but man, he's got this sparkling water, and yeah, for the win, it's like literally 10 milligrams. And I'm a bit, I'm a fan of, of, I mean, I've come around to edible. It's a fine line. Some people are not fans of edibles because THC obviously converts in your stomach different than it does in your lungs. Um, or even, you know, transdermal topical, but it's so nice. Cause then you can still socialize. Yeah. Then I can still have a drink with everyone yeah. else. And the, the last time, I just don't have the, the last time I actually ate anything that was infused, I was stuck 
at the checkout, self-checkout <laughs> line in the fucking grocery store oh trying to find broccoli through the fucking menu system. And I'm like, oh my why gosh. can't I do this? Why? <laughs> what? Oh my God. Stop. You had Time to go out. to pictures. What is go- I did. But I, finally. But I'm That's like, why? Broccoli? why, why it's an albino broccoli. Why can't I get? Why can't I understand? <laughs> what is happening right now? Why is my... What the hell is going on? Oh and I'm like, oh, the frosting. <laughs> Oh, on the gosh. brownies. Oh. oh. Yeah, I'm never going to figure this out. Hey, can you help me? You know, oh, my gosh. Yeah, I was like, fuck, I was so confused. Did, I was really high, but I, I didn't I, have I, no idea so, I was so, high. So do you want to like, know what your animal means? I want to hear the yeah, end yeah, of your okay. story. Yeah, yeah, we got to get We got to wrap her up. Marco, the we voice of reason. Here comes Marco. Ten the voice of humanity. Okay. Yeah. But I want to so hear. So the, the meaning of this, which the reason why I put so much into it was because I was the one that said, but I have two animals. And why did I have the same words for each? And there, that person that invested their entire life into looking into this says that it's not the animal that means something. It's the description of the animal. And the words that you describe your animal as are the way that other people view you. And so I thought that was... I was not into psychology. I told you I took this class in the, as an elective. But because of the way that I saw things, yeah. I said, there's, there's something to this. So I started doing it my whole life, asking people. I'm telling you, this lawyer that worked with, he was like working for my dad's lawyer, and he's a boxer and very good looking. I asked him, you know what he said? Badger. It was like sneaky. Honey badger or just the usual? <laughs> there was no the honey in this badger. Oh, wow. <laughs> this is a fucking bad <laughs> is a jur. Vinegar a badger. Bad yeah, a bad jur. Bad jur. It was bad. a bad jur. But you know what? It's like, I, sw- I swear to God, this all my whole life. He would have never, ever said those sorts of things. But just this simple question. No. Like, who who in the world? I didn't even know what a badger was. Right? And and, and that the, the large range of... Uh, answers that you'll get, not just the animal range, but the 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 um, characteristics. Yeah, yeah, it's it's fascinating. So, you know, you have to do it very slyly because some people will know what you're doing. So you just have to give them a few drinks. <laughs> Yeah, or an was, edible, this, in my this case. This all came down. To, don't fucking use that against me, bro. Don't fucking use that against me, bro. Sandy's going to love it. Yeah, yeah, don't, don't, okay. don't, don't use that shit against me, bro. Don't use that shit against me. Did I tell you fucking use that against me? Oh, my gosh. <laughs> and, and to wrap things up, I brought everybody right. an afternoon uh-huh. delight <laughs> joint. And so. To, 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 to just finish the whole thing. Yeah. Nice I just up. thought, like, let's smooth off. Into the sunset with a little afternoon our, delight. Our history yeah, and our exactly. future with our employees, Marco. <laughs> I just realized loyal and faithful are too similar. I'm going to do a redo. I want to redo. I thought it when he said it, but I didn't want to be rude. <laughs> no, it's fine. It's I didn't good. put too much thought into it. All right, listen, I know too much. So, um, yeah, I know, yeah, everybody does. Um, wow. That was two that hours was awesome. almost there right yeah. there. Good job. Good yeah, times. Was, yeah, that's cool. Are you, are you guys open to going to a really fun dinner? Uh, yeah. Let's yeah. go. Let's go right now. It's my treat. Oh. I'm taking you somewhere. I'm taking you somewhere. Nice. I'm taking you somewhere phenomenal. Very well, special. You will have I, lots of fun. I have to take my pup home, but I can do that. Okay. Yeah. 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 No All problem. Right. We'll get the table ready for you. Nice. <laughs> so, um, just to just to wrap up, I I think you know, one of the things that I love about this opportunity. Look, I mean, honestly. Um, putting putting the microphone in front of your mouth and putting the headphones on and it's kind of just what you just did you you have a couple of drinks and things loosen up it's really so interesting because there's facets of thing of people uh, that you're never going to find and that's the idea with this it's just a you know because there's successful people in this business and you can say oh it's this formula or you do it this way you do that i'm not a formula guy i think formulas have value but i'm not a formula guy i think people you know, and, 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 and people who are successful often buck the formula or kind of just fight against some things. You, you realize what you have to comply with, obviously. There's compliance issues, right? But there's also other things that, you, you know, you're told like, oh, you, you know, do this, you do it this way. And I'm like, yeah, fuck, I don't think so. I'm going to do it this way. And, and, and uh, so anyway, I don't know where I'm going with it. But the point is it's 
really nice to get a peek inside who you are. And I appreciate you being on. And it, yeah. it, was, it was a lot of fun. And it, look, it took up two episodes, so I can take a break for two weeks <laughs> and not have to worry about this crap anymore. So it's good. Good, good stuff. Oh, yeah. It was really nice to meet you. How we close off? That's it. We're okay. done. Yeah. Yeah, don't worry about it. He'll, yeah. he'll make it okay. all sound good at the okay, end. Okay, can it I tell you something? Really yeah. quick. I, th- I think with all my heart, um, like we watch movies. Right, and yeah. movies are supposed to have this like this like low, this high, this low, this high, this, this. like life automatically has that. Yeah. We don't have to fake what life is. When instead of ha- I, I just I've never been into watching fiction or reading fiction. I love real life. I mm. feel like real life is 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 just as magical, if not more, than real life. And I can tell you, it's and definitely I know, more entertaining. Oh, and, and, and think about it. <laughs> this is like, another exercise. Yeah. I'm a huge sci-fi fan. Yeah, yeah we're starting back over <laughs> episode. Isaac three. Asimov, you're my <laughs> hero. I think without sci-fi, we 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 really don't move into the future. So I will. Hey, say that. you. I mean, I know this could be a whole other, but think about it. Some of the things in sci-fi that have come into fruition. Wow. I mean, seriously, well, like you, mobile you, phones. Okay, so, yeah, so space yeah. travel. But all of that so, was so, sci-fi. So, since we're, can we take our headphones off and have an arm? We're not. Recording anymore, right? Oh no, you're on. Oh yeah, I'm still on. Yeah, we are still on. <laughs> we, we're not gonna let anything go to waste around here. On part know, three of the Yeah, we're just gonna keep going. Okay, um, so I'm just gonna. Wrap. Someone order in dinner. Gonna, I listen. Someone why order don't, in dinner. Listen, I, I think you brought. You're the first guest that's come in and brought a cool box and a gift. I thought it was really cool. But why don't you go back in and just give a little bit of the impetus behind sure. that? Sure. Okay. So um, the premise of getting together and creating Dazed and Confucius, which is yeah. just getting ready to launch, is that um, the darkness that I felt and everything I went through in the last year of our lives, and I know that we all experienced this together as a globe, it was such a dark time. Yeah. It, was, it, was, it was like uh, you're living in a, in a nightmare. Yeah. And... Um, I've always been a person that loves, like I'm a very optimistic person. I say, if you work for me, we talk about solutions, not problems. We never gossip. I have certain rules, right? So that year of my life went against everything I believe in. With the riots, with the political issues, with the coronavirus, with everything. And I said, I want, I want to share the positivity that what I do is I bring little groups of people, you know, I love hosting parties, but it's usually like 20, 30, 40, 50 people. And I play these games and I like to have fun, but at the end of the night, I've impacted those people and those people can, how can I impact more people? So I came up with a concept to do Days in Confucius where we get together and we talk for philosophy and we walk philanthropy. Philanthropy, that's a big word. It is a good one, though. Especially when you're doing it. It's a good one. Um, Where you get together and you talk about far-out ideas, whether it's spirituality, science, quantum physics, which I love, which I, quantum physics is one of my favorite things to talk about, (laughs) but also like aliens and what in the world is going on, everything. Let's get together and let's have fun conversations but let's also incorporate uh, philanthropy. So that's why I partnered with Amy from Can Do Clemency. And I wanted all of these funds to go to her and to everything that she's doing to make petitions to help people that have been incarcerated for these types of convictions and to help them get released. In fact, the pers- first person that I'm going to be interviewing on Days and Confucius is like, <laughs> one of the sweetest souls I ever met, and he was incarcerated for 26 years. I want to melt when I hug him. I love him like there's no tomorrow, and I just want the stories of these people to be told. I want us to talk about elevated conversations. I don't want us to focus on the things that we have been because I think that when we get people to focus on the right thing, then we can navigate where we're going. It's sort of like birds. Okay, let me just say this one little thing and I want to let it go. Birds, you've seen them like fly and they fly in these 
most amazing patterns, right? But I heard that birds, the way that they determine which way they're going to go is that 50% or more of them agree on which way they're going to go. And then they go that way. It's sort of like a democracy. Yeah, kind of. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I mean yeah, if it's a, if it's a legit democracy. Plus, yeah, yeah. We are yeah. not one bird leading the pack, so it's not communist. Yeah. <laughs> That's for sure. Uh. Anyway, I, I just I think if we could tilt the conversation to one that's meaningful and impactful and loving and inclusive and um like driven to make this world a better place than you know there's 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 no limit to what we can do okay so now True. how do we find out where do where do, where do people go to know to, i think i out? think i think we go inside i i know it's crazy like i always i always thought like i wanted to be an astronaut when i was growing up i actually like my first crush was not Lance. No. <laughs> no. It really? Was, no. Neil Armstrong. Uh, my first crush was Ronald Reagan. I was oh in first God. grade. The Ron. I swear I to God, because he was all about the Less space race, and I, I, I wanted to be an astronaut. And I swear to God, I was going to be an astronaut. I even remember when I got my. I. I am. Um, you can see I've got really big teeth, right? Nobody oh else gosh. Gonna, right? But I had. <laughs> I had. Really I, I also had a, an abundance of them, so I had to get six of them pulled. So they gave me nitrous oxide. That's where the astronaut comes into play. <laughs> yeah, no. you, you definitely were out of this world with night. Oh, I, I was out about. of yeah. this world. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I just um, I I I. Okay, I, so so how do we how do people find out more or get involved or listen to or be a to, part uh, of? Uh, oh, domain? thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so well, we can post it up too. So for for yeah. those who are, okay, are, so are so for those of you that are interested in. Uh, learning about our global cannabis industry networking group, you can go to gcing.org and you can sign up. Or you can go to cannabiscommunitycollege.com and you can sign up for free on the community board and we will keep you informed on everything that's going on. Awesome. Cool. Thank you for letting me plug that. Uh, yeah, why not? You came all the way out here. You yeah, might as well get something sure. out of it. Right? All, the, all the way, 30 minutes yeah. away. Well, you know. <laughs> Depends on the traffic. <laughs> yeah, it does. And in the heat, it could be, you know, it's days. And if EDC is uh, going on or if you yeah. know, NASCAR's in town, then yeah. forget about it. Yeah, it'll be a while. <laughs> Pretty good around the corner. Awesome, man. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Th- yeah. Thank you for having me. Definitely always a treat. Let's, let's go out and have some... More conversations. <laughs> we could just stay here and go on for hours. I'm ordering pizza. Four more, four, yeah. <laughs> P- I love pizza. Let's do yeah, it. Pizza. Yeah, yeah, it's a wrap. Awesome. Well, thank you guys for joining. That concludes our podcast for this week. Don't forget to check us out on all the socials at Green Bros.